There we go. I am so looking forward to this program. Uh, Kupa, go ahead and introduce yourself and share about this incredible hour that we're about to have together uh, of the diary, diary reading um, project that you put together with uh, the Jewish Museum in Milwaukee. Thank you, David. Um, so my name is Jakub Nowakowski. I'm the director of uh, Galicia Jewish Museum in Krakow, Poland. Um, and uh, during, uh, during this hour, and we are thrilled and honored to be part of this, this wonderful and unique uh, initiative. Um, during this hour, we want to uh, focus on a, a diary that was uh, found uh, in uh, liberated Auschwitz-Birkenau camp in January 1945. Um, it was a diary written by a teenager uh, girl, Rivka Lipschitz, in the witch ghetto between October 1943 and uh, April 1944. The testament of the Orthodox Jewish girl who lost her uh, siblings and parents, but actually never lost her hope. Um, in 2020, as a part of this, this uh, initiative, uh, Global Vigil, uh, the excerpts of, of, of this diary will be read by people from four continents uh, of different ages uh, and backgrounds, including Grifka's uh, family members from Israel, staff of the Galicia Jewish Museum in Krakow, our friends and partners from Jewish Museum Milwaukee, community members, um, last but not least, researchers who made it possible to find um, identity of the author of the diary. Uh, because actually, uh, more than 60 years after its discovery, the diary traveled to the United States, where it was translated from Polish, uh, supplemented with comments, and published in a book form. In 2016, Galicia Jewish Museum in Krakow created an exhibition based on this story, and this exhibition is now presented at the Jewish Museum in Milwaukee. Um, and this program is, is devoted, obviously, to victims of the uh, Holocaust and other genocides. But uh, our, our, our 60 minutes, um, we would like to devote uh, in particular to memory of Rivka Lipschitz, of Abramek Lipschitz, of Sipka Lipschitz, and of Tamara Lipschitz, uh, of Ewuj Ghetto. Uh, so David, if you can now play um, the video where Amoli Dabin from the Jewish Museum of Milwaukee will um, also say a few words. Um, my name is Jakub Nowakowski. I'm the director of the Galicia Jewish Museum in Krakow, uh, Poland, and we are delighted to be a part of the e Global Vigil uh, project. Um, in 1945, a Soviet doctor found a school notebook in the liberated um, Auschwitz-Birkenau camp. It was a diary written by the teenage Rivka Lipschitz in the witch ghetto between October 1940 free and April 1944. The testament of an Orthodox Jewish girl who lost her siblings and parents but never lost her hope. Um, in 2020, as a part of the Global Vigil, the excerpts of the diary will be read by people from four continents of different ages, languages and backgrounds, including Rivka family members, staff of the Galicia Jewish Museum, um, and our partners from Jewish Museum Milwaukee, community members and researchers who made it possible um, to find identity of the author of the diary. More than 60 years after the di discovery, the diary traveled to the United States, where it was translated from Polish, supplemented with uh, commentaries, and published in a book form. In 2016, Galicia Jewish Museum in Krakow, Poland, created an exhibition based on this story that is now presented at the Jewish Museum Milwaukee. This program is um, devoted to the memory of Rivka Lipschitz, of Abraham Lipschitz, of Sipka Lipschitz, and of Tamara Lipschitz. Hi, I'm Molly Dubin, curator with the Jewish Museum Milwaukee. My colleagues at the Jewish Museum and our colleagues in Poland at the Galicia Jewish Museum are thrilled to be collaborating to be part of this important initiative, a 24-hour vigil in recognition of genocide awareness. Our collaboration with the Galicia enabled us to bring an incredible exhibit entitled Searching for Rivka, the Girl in the Diary, to the United States. The Jewish Museum Milwaukee is honored to be the first US venue to be able to share it. And while we can't physically see and experience that exhibit, we and many friends from around the world are going to read excerpts from Rivka's diary as a incredible and important initiative of remembrance. 
Thank you. Yesterday in the office I was reading a novel that I returned to Hayusha later. I was reading a sonata of suffering. Ah, it's written so well that I really admire the author. There is much in the novel I identify with, but there are also things that I oppose. Let's take, for example, faith. I'm a religious person. He wanted to believe that he couldn't find solace in faith. It's simply brilliant, but I agree with his internal struggle. Ah, it really got into me. Perhaps that's why my heart broke. As I've mentioned before, it's such moments I'd like to be on my own, or alone with a person who would understand me. I was visiting Fela Jaworska. I told her about it, but neither I nor she had any more time. Time. This awful lack of time. It takes its toll on me. Not only in me, but on everybody. Ah. I feel now that my heart is breaking. Sunday. October 17, 1943. Today is Sukkot and after a long time, this is finally a free Sunday for me. On Wednesday, I was assigned to the school, but I am on a waiting list right now because there is no place for me. On Friday, there was a big mess. After lighting the Sabbath candles, Estusi and Minya went to Lola's. The light was on in Lola's apartment, but nobody answered the door. When we found out, we didn't know what to think. Nasia, Bronka and Paula Jazz were with us. We had to wait. Minutes seemed like hours. Finally, Lola and Meyer showed up. And what happened? The secret police were looking for a neighbor who was hiding in their place. That's why they couldn't open the door. October 23rd, 1943. The holidays are over. Oh, I have so much to write that I don't know where to start. I know I can't write everything today. On Wednesday, I went to school. I liked it very much. We were learning how to take measurements for a skirt. Actually, the course is starting on Monday. I'm glad because I haven't been there since last Thursday due to the holidays. I'm still hesitating over whether I should keep writing. I have neither patience nor time. Well, no, I will stop. October 26, 1943. I am feeling better, but Sunday evening I had a high fever. On Sunday, we had a lot of work. Laundry, not finished yet. Windows, bed sheets, some errands in town. Sunday, October 31st, 1943. Today's Sunday. Estusia and Minya are working. Hanusia is not working at the bank. It is very cold. I'm very upset. This morning it came back to me that Abramek and Tamara were deported and that Mama was dead. I became so sad, so overcome by pain. And I thought, I laugh, I'm cheerful, though I think a lot about them. I also think about other things. But I'm always full of remorse that I did something one way instead of the other. Could I ever imagine that we would be separated? It never crossed my mind. When before the war and its beginning, I was reading some sad books, I'd get very emotional. But once I finished reading, I thought, yes, it's so beautiful, but it's only a novel. Could it happen in reality? I couldn't even imagine that I would be left without parents. And today... Today, I have gone through this myself. I learned the hard way. Ani Mina Lipschitz Boyer gara bebnei brat Israel shlishi le November arbaim veshalosh. Bezman acharon yechmer matzaf aspaka begeto. Kol anere yichul anu gat kapayret. Oi, kol ze bechlal ne masalai. גם בשנה שעברה לקחו לנו את הביירות. מינה הייתה אצל גרטלר. הייתה לה פרוטקציה, הי, הייתה לנו פרוטקציה רצינית. ואז החזירו אותה למספר משפחות, ואנחנו היינו ביניהם. אבל עכשיו לא תעזר שום פרוטקציה. מי יודע? הכל תלוי בחסדי האל. 
גם אני לא לגמרי עצמי, בכלל. לגבי אשכול ככה, זה לא רע. מזה אני מרוצה. אוכל לקבל טיפולי שיניים בחינם, ואוכל לתפור מעיל באמצעות הוועדה להסבה מקצועית. אוי, אומן שלי. לו רק הייתי יכולה לרשום את כל מה שאני מרגישה כלפיך. לו רק היה לי יותר זמן. או, איזה מטען רובץ לי על הלב. הייתי אצל פלה, היה אמור להיות היום שיעור עברית. לא היה. אין לזה גם טעם. הכל ביחד. אבל הכתיבה שלי כאוטית. אני חייבת כבר ללכת לישון. Thursday, November 4th, 1943. Today we were using a sewing machine. We were supposed to have other classes too, but during our first machine class, not all the girls could sew because there were not enough machines. That's why we had another class of machine sewing. I had time to make an honest stitch. Besides, I'm very sad. I don't show it, but sadness is tearing my heart apart. I yearn for something better, and I miss Abramek and Tamarcia. In the past, I used to sing Kinder Yorn to them. It felt so good. Yesterday we had the first snow. We were to pick up some clothes and shoes, but we didn't show up on time, and so I had to do it today. I couldn't go to school and neither could Zipka, and my nose was running terribly. Oh, I wrote a letter to Circe. I love her more and more. What a pity we don't see each other much. Evan Fella told me that as of a little while ago I had changed both for the better and for the worse, that I had become conceited. I replied that it may be because I'm friends with Circe, etc. Eva told me that she thought I was gossiping with Circe about the girls, including about her. Oh, they're so wrong. Maybe they're simply jealous, well, maybe not. There's a heavy weight on my heart. Litzmannstadt, Ghetto, 24th of November, 1943. I am sick of my entire life. This never-ending grudges of my cousins, etc., etc. Besides, there is no Byron anymore. Oh dear God, when is this going to end? I don't want to live at all. I have just thought, what a pity that Jews are not allowed to kill themselves. It seems that you mustn't even think about it. I can't stand it anymore. I'm writing these words standing at the small table. That's why I'm scribbling so much. It seems to me that I am not showing my feelings. Maybe. 11 grudnia 1943 rok Z listu do Surci Kochana Surciu, czasem myślę, że życie jest cierniową drogą. Na tej drodze, wśród cierni, ludzi, znajdują się inne kwiaty, delikatniejsze. Takie kwiaty nie mają specjalnego życia, cierpią przez ciernie. Czasem ciernie są zazdrosne o piękność tamtych kwiatów i dokuczają im więcej. A tamte kwiaty albo same stają się cierniami, albo cierpiąc milczą i chodzą przez cierniową drogę. Nie zawsze się to im udaje, ale gdy wytrwają, ich szczęście zostaje powetowane. Zdaje mi się, że to rzadko się zdarza, ale w każdym razie myślę, że każdy prawdziwy Żyd dąży do celu milcząc i cierpiąc zarazem. Poza tym myślę, że życie jest piękne i trudne, że żyć trzeba umieć. Godni zazdrości są ci ludzie, którzy cierpieli dużo i przeszli przez życie i wygrali walkę z życiem. Wiesz, Surciu, tacy ludzie, gdy o takich czytam czy słyszę, Dodają mi otuchy. Wtedy widzę, że nie jestem ani jedna, ani pierwsza i mogę prędzej mieć nadzieję. 
ale nie piszę o sobie. Wiesz, czasem, gdy mi bardzo źle, podziwiam życie. Wtedy się zastanawiam. Przecież w tym samym czasie jedni płaczą, inni się śmieją, inni cierpią. W tym samym czasie jedni się rodzą, drudzy umierają, inni chorują. Ci, którzy się rodzą, podrastają, dojrzewają, aby znowu żyć i cierpieć. Jednak wszyscy chcą żyć. Rwą się do życia. I zawsze, czasem może podświadomie, człowiek żyjący ma nadzieję. I mimo to, że życie jest trudne, każdy chce z tym trudem walczyć. Bo to, co jest trudne, jest piękne. Życie ma dziwny czar i urok. Ale powiem Ci prawdę, że teraz mi się w ogóle nie chce żyć. Nie mam po prostu sił. Zaraz się położę spać i nie chce mi się już w ogóle wstać. Ach, surciu, gdybym do prawdy mogła nie wstać. Niewiele będzie brakowało i papier będzie zupełnie mokry. Surciu, ale kiedy Ci ten list oddam, już będzie i tak po wszystkim i będę nadal żyła, ale nie wiem, czy podołam temu trudnemu życiu. Wątpię w to bardzo. December 11th, 1943, Saturday. Cersei read my diary. She said that I should write more so I could develop a clear style and that while writing, I must control myself. She asked me for a long letter in which I would tell her about my thoughts and feelings and what I thought about human life. She asked me to pay no heed to my level of knowledge. Before I started to write, I was very nervous, but it seems that during writing, all the nervousness goes away. I only seem to see positive features in Circea. When I have a problem, I think about her all the time. Oh, there is no shortage of problems. I have to finish. Dinner is waiting. Dear Sorcia, sometimes I think that life is a dark road. On this road, among the thorns, there are other, more delicate flowers. These flowers have no life. They suffer because of the thorns. Sometimes the thorns are jealous of the flower's beauty and hurt them more. The flowers either become thorns themselves or suffer in silence and walk through the thorns. They don't always succeed, but if they persevere, something good will come of it. I think it happens quite rarely, but in my opinion, every true Jew who is pursuing a goal suffers and keeps silent. Besides, I think life is beautiful and difficult. I think one has to know how to live. I envy people who have suffered a lot and have lived a difficult life, and yet have won the battle with life. You know, Sorcia, such people, when I hear or read about them, cheer me up. I then realize I am not the only one or the first one that I can have hope, but I'm not writing about myself. You know, when I'm very upset, I admire life. Then I wonder why at the same time are some people crying while others are laughing or suffering? At the same time, some are being born, others die or get sick. Those who are born grow up. They mature in order to live and suffer. And yet all of them want to live, desperately want to live. A living person always has hope, sometimes unconsciously. Although life is difficult, it is also beautiful. Life has its strange charm. I will tell you the truth. I don't feel like living. It's too much for me. I will go to sleep soon and I don't want to get up. Oh, Sorcia, if I really couldn't get up, very little will be missing and this paper will be totally wet. Sorcia, when I give you this letter, it will be over and I will still be alive.
but I have no idea if I will be able to cope with this difficult life. I doubt it. Oh, Sorcia, I'd love so much to talk to you, to see you. I miss you. You are a big plus in my life. Oh, I can't imagine not knowing the group of you and you in particular, I'd break. But even you won't listen to such a litany of sorrows. Oh, you wanted to know what I have been working on recently. Well, I want to make sure that I express the right opinion about this and that, not about things, mainly actions and thoughts, for example, whether I make wrong judgments. Please reply. It will be a lesson for me. Your Rivka is asking you. Regards. We have found out something ugly about Mania. She was copying poems from books, pretending they were hers. It's very ugly. I'm going to write her a letter to arrange a meeting with her. I want to talk to her. I can see that the girls aren't doing anything and mostly count on me. This annoys me a great deal. Yesterday, Miss Zelitska left me a note to show up at her place tomorrow at noon about some personal matter. I'm very curious. What's more, there is a new order by Bierbov that those who will work 55 hours a week will receive a coupon. Passes are not being issued and people are speeding up production. This coupon will take away more than it will bring. I miss Thurtsia. I miss Abramek, Tamacha. I love them. I have noticed that I love Chipka more and more when she does something good, gets good grades. She is the best student. When she understands what happens at the assemblies, it fills me with pride and I feel happy though not for too long. I'd like so much for everything to be well. Oh, oh yes, we are collecting provisions for Dorcas and she is not well. The family is giving almost everything to their mother who is in the hospital. Probably she will need an operation. We'll make sure she gets her rations through the workshop. I was elected to the literature club today. At seven, I'm going to the tailors. I will have seal, fur on the collar and lapels, as well as a winter cape. At night, I had an argument with Minya. Really, I don't really recall about what. Something about a chair. I only know that I was very upset. And when I went to bed, I felt like crying. Fortunately, I could cry, but very little. Honestly, I wanted to die. I tried to regain some balance, but I'm tired of life, I thought. I know that now, when I want to die, I won't die. I die when I want to live. When I have a purpose in life. Who needs such a life? Isn't it better to die when there is no purpose? and not when you want to live? Those questions were left unanswered. Suddenly, I had an urge to talk to Zuchia, to tell her that I don't know anything, can't do anything, don't understand anything. Now, I don't feel that I know very little. I know nothing. I try to catch up with my friends, but well, they are so different. Words are so empty. They express so little. In my opinion, with words, one can only discuss ordinary, common things. Between people who love each other, words desecrate everything. Those people can communicate without words. Their souls and eyes can speak, their emotions to speak. They can feel. But why am I writing all this? Again a question without an answer. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I didn't know Surcha at all. I don't know. I can't imagine it. I can appreciate my good luck. Emotions. I can't express myself with words. It's much easier for me to express myself with emotions. But enough. Today I will meet Surcha. May there be no obstacles. Thursday, January 6th, 1944. Astusia is not well. She has a high fever. That's just what I need. And I... I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know what to do. I grasp at straws. Yesterday I came to the conclusion that I like being alone at home. I realized that when I was alone, I was in a different world living my inner life. When there was somebody else at the house, for example, my cousins or the neighbors, I felt ill at ease, at a loss. When I'm alone and my girlfriends come to visit, I'm relaxed. And although I don't go into ecstasies in my other life, I can occasionally share a thought with them. It happens quite rarely and the girlfriends don't come too often. That's why yesterday I couldn't get lost in my thoughts. I had to watch the grueling cooking. My thoughts were escaping me, and I could hardly keep my balance. I was at Fellows today. 
I was very sorry I didn't get to visit her when she was sick. Yesterday she was already dressed. She was supposed to visit me, but acted out of wounded pride and, well, I'm glad she didn't come because I'd, been, I'd have been even more sorry. I really wanted to, but every day I had so much to do. Astusha has the flu. Generally, there's a flu in the ghetto, an epidemic. Ugh, really. I describe external life so much that I won't have time to write about my inner life. A woman from Zhidovska Street has just come, the one who disperses money. I haven't received my 10-day payment for three months, and I don't have time to take care of it. But enough of this. A few days ago, I realized I was re that I really was thinking about many problems, but at moments when I couldn't write, it happens mostly when I'm peeling potatoes. Every time I think about it, I repeat a verse I made. I didn't even write it down. Oh, to write as long as I breathe about everything, my diary. January 14th, 1944. In our literature club, we published a little newspaper. Marvelous, really marvelous. I've written two poems. Here's one of them. Memories. I remember my brother. I remember him and I sigh. I remember my father. Something weighs on my heart. And a female figure. My eyes are foggy. It was my mommy. I'm about to cry. I remember my school, my friends. I ask myself a question. Why? My teachers? Isn't there in the world and my classes a warmer place? I remember this question with nostalgia. It remains a question, and my heart aches, and offers nothing. Oh, enough, enough, but a greater suffering of this terrible misery, this suffering. Something is boiling inside me. It's joined by longing. I will never know peace, and it's tearing my heart apart. I ask again, aren't there enough, and it's battering my heart Hardships and difficulties, horrible longing. I cry and cry, lethal longing, but my voice can't be heard. For my brother, my sister, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? For my mother and my father, what's going to happen? Damn it. Right now, I have no answer. Maybe this one. We Jews. We Jews, a long time ago, I noticed, and Sersha, it brought to my attention in her letter that I liked suffering, but it's hard, and I'm afraid I'll break down. I'm afraid. I remember very well that when something serious happened, everybody was going crazy, but deep down, at the bottom of my soul, there was always a place for some other feeling. My heart was growing, but I can't compare myself to Rabbi Akiba. He was a scholar. He knew how to behave, what to do. And I, I know so little. I become helpless. I don't know what to do. I can only see black spots of ignorance. January 15th, 1944, Saturday. It's horrible. I feel I'm losing my balance. Both of Circea's brothers and her mother are sick. Chayusia is sick. Yesterday I visited Circea. She showed me some of her poems. Oh, I thought I was reading my own. What a resemblance. Today, neither Chayusia or Circea attended the assembly. Earlier, Chayusia had given us an article from a magazine to read. Suliba Akenya Basha Fairnish, on account of a small creature. On the way back, Eva and I stopped by Chayusia's to return the magazine. We talked about Chpera. Eva talked to her heart's content. It seemed that she got it off her chest. I kept silent. What was I supposed to say? 
Cherusia told us how she all, how they all managed to save themselves in Charnekego Street. They were there during the Tzpera. That conversation, the whole thing upset me. I don't feel well. I have no strength. My heart has become a heavy stone. I'm choking, choking. And now a story. Fela came over today and told me that Kalmo, a younger brother of Dorkazan, had borrowed potatoes and rutabaga from her without informing anybody at home. He borrowed from Dorka Berzanskar too. Oh, he is a swindler. Oh, I feel sorry for Mrs. Zahn and Dorka. I really don't want to go back to work today on Monday. Well, it's unbearable. I can't find a place for myself. But will I feel better if I don't go to work? Not at all. Yesterday, Circea was reading me some fragments of Psalms. Oh, it's marvelous and so up to date. One can understand it, feel it. Oh, suffering is necessary, but enough. People suffered in their ordinary lives too. Everything should have its limits. I'm afraid to write a letter to Sorcia again, because instead of cheering her up, I'd write something different. Oh, I'm so exhausted. I'm full of remorse because Abramek and Tamarsha were deported. Oh, God, bring them back to me. I can't stand it. My heart is going to break. Abramek, where are you? Tamarsha, oh, I can't. I can't. I need strength. Oh, I feel like weeping. I feel like a lump of stone. I can't even cry. Oh, go to hell, you plunderers and murderers. I'll never forgive you, never. But in the face of them, I'm helpless. What's more, nowadays at home, they talk about the dead. Today at two o'clock, one neighbor died. She fainted and that's it. She was a healthy woman. When will it end? When will this endless suffering end? I'll go crazy. I need strength. God, strength. January 17th, 1944. Kanusha has the flu. Mrs. Markusova is feeling better. We had a math class at school today. The best machines were moved to the lecture room and will be in the third group. There was no assembly yesterday at uh, Mary Lou Luska's house. We were at her place the whole time. Her mother is sick and generally it's the flu, a serious obstacle. On Tuesday, we have a general assembly with everybody. And on Wednesday, something like a session, only the old and older. Until now, when we have come to the assemblies, it has been so comfortable. We have been like one, but today we are strangely alienated. Yesterday, when I was walking in the street, I was dreaming. I had this picture before my eyes, a barely lit room, warm, a few kids are sitting at the table. They are busy with something or they are listening to what I'm reading. I'm reading about the ghetto. I'm telling them stories and I can see their surprised eyes. It's boggling their minds that something like that could happen. Oh, I wish this time would come. I long for it so much. I'm cold and hungry. I'm cold not only because of the winter, but because I lack inner warmth. I'm hungry not only because I have little food and can't fill my stomach, but because I'm starved and thirsty, because I feel like a vast vacuum. And this place is cold and empty. Hunger. Oh, to get warmer. 
yesterday in order to get our rations, we had to bring our own bags. I was making them yesterday at Kushka's house. They don't give away the rations anymore. What's more, we have to carry them all a long way. It's cold around my heart. When I felt it, I recalled a story about a poor boy and an old man. The boy said, when my feet are cold, I can stamp them. When my hands are cold, I can rub them. So he handed him a coat to warm up his heart and told him, my boy, take care of your heart because it's most important. Make sure it never gets cold. I've written a letter to Soria. I'm going, it's going to upset her. I've written as I would in my diary that I can't stand it anymore, that I'm losing my strength. Litzmannstadt Ghetto, 19. Januar 1944. Gestern Abend habe ich beim Schlafengehen unwillkürlich das Säckchen mit den Fotos hervorgeholt. Ich habe nur ein paar angeschaut, ach. Mein Gott, als ich Tamazias Foto angeschaut habe, ist mir klar geworden, dass sie jetzt schon sechs ist. Schon im siebten Lebensjahr. In diesem Alter bin ich schon zur Schule gegangen. Ach, wie schön wäre es wenn alle Kinder wieder in eine richtige Schule gehen könnten. Mir kamen die Tränen. Wie durch einen Schleier habe ich Tamazias verängstigte Augen gesehen. So sieht sie auf dem Foto aus. Ach, ich fürchte mich, darüber zu schreiben. Sie sieht aus, als würde sie nach mir rufen. Als würde sie um Hilfe rufen. Und ich konnte nichts tun. January 19th, 1944, Wednesday. Again, I have very little time. The classes at the school are almost normal, but I don't want to write about it. When Circa came to assembly yesterday, she was cheerful. Her mother is feeling better. At night going to bed, I involuntarily reach for the pouch filled with photos. I look at a few of them. Oh, God. When I saw Tamara's picture, I suddenly realized that she was now six, going on seven years old. At her age, I was going to school. Oh, it would be so wonderful if all of the children could go to school. My eyes were filled with tears. Through the fog of the tears, I could see Tamara's frightened eyes. That's how she looked in the picture. Oh, I'm afraid to write about it. She looks like she was calling me, like she was crying for help. I did nothing. I was in bed. I couldn't even cry. My heart was pounding and I tried to break free. I did nothing. Oh, Tamars, where are you? I want to help you. I'm tossing and turning. Well, I'm tied down. Oh, how many tragedies are contained in these words? I'm scared. I miss her. I'm drenched with cold and hot sweat. A drowning person will grasp even at a razor. I want to become lost in words. Think about something different, but this helplessness, this weakness, it's surfacing. What's next? One can't live like this anymore. Oh, strength, strength, dear God, strength. All of a sudden, I ask myself anxiously if I'm recognized to Marsa. Years are passing by. Oh God, how can I not think about it? How can I take it? I look into my mother's eyes in the photo. Oh God, how much they express and how much to Marsa resembles her. Oh, I'll never tell you this, Mom. You've left me forever. I feel horrible. I'm suffocated. God, let me take the place of my mother. Let me suffer for my siblings. Oh God, it's so hard. And I'm always alone. Every week, I wait impatiently for Friday evening and Saturday. I don't know. I cannot imagine at all what would happen if we didn't have that one Saturday. I feel so good. I can think and dream, dream, dream and forget. Let me dream. It's a completely different world. 
I have some experience. So even a dream isn't something charming and magical for me. In my dreams, I struggle with life, with this giant. And the only difference here is that I'm doing it for somebody. I'm doing it with pleasure and I feel wonderful. Maybe somebody who's watching me will nod and say, poor child, her dreams are really pipe dreams, but that's what they are. It's a relief for me to move into a dream world. 26 stycznia 1944 roku. Z listu do surci. Prosiłaś mnie w tamtym liście, abym ci napisała, co uważam za szczęście. Więc moim zdaniem szczęśliwy jest ten, który może się podnieść. I wtedy jest jeszcze szczęśliwszy, bo pierw upadł i może swoje szczęście ocenić. Ale szczęście bywa także w innym znaczeniu. Na przykład spokój ducha, ulga i tym podobne. Ale największe jest wtedy, gdy człowiek o nim wie, gdy może je ocenić. Na przykład dla mnie byłoby wielkim szczęściem ciepło. I nawet najcięższa praca, o ile bym wiedziała, że zrobię ją dla kogoś mi bliskiego, byłaby mi osłodą i szczęściem. Już się o tym przekonałam, wtedy, gdy mamusia była chora. Wtedy byłam przecież o wiele młodsza i sama wszystko robiłam, a jednak tak mi było słodko, tak dobrze. Wiedziałam, że mamusia ma z tego zadowolenie i to dodawało mi sił. Nikt o tym nie wiedział, to jeszcze dotychczas jest moje osobiste. Prawda, miałam nawet okropne chwile, ale wiedziałam, że na nikim nie mogę polegać. Zresztą miałam także Abramka. <śmiech> Surciu, mówię ci, to było dziecko. Nie możesz sobie w ogóle wyobrazić. I wspólnymi siłami mogliśmy się dźwignąć. A teraz? Nic dziwnego, że mi tak trudno. I powiem ci jeszcze coś. Dotychczas, gdy mi pisałaś, że Estusia jest ze mnie zadowolona i żeby mi to było pociechą, starałam się, żeby rzeczywiście tak było. Lecz w żaden sposób nie mogło się to stać. A teraz, gdy mi powiedziałaś, że ona tak tylko mówi, odczułam, dawniej tylko rozumiałam, że ty doprawdy mnie rozumiesz i zawsze jesteś ze mną i ty zawsze mi pomagasz. No, serwus kochana. Twoja rywcia. January 26, 1994, Wednesday, from the letter to Sersha. In your last letter, you asked me to tell you what happiness means to me. In my opinion, happy is the person who picks himself up. And at that point, he is even happier because first he fell down and now he can appreciate his good fortune. But happiness means many other things. For example, inner peace, relief, etc. But the greatest happiness is when a person is aware of it, when he can appreciate it. For example, for me, warmth would be a great happiness. And even the hardest work would be too, if only I knew that I were doing it for somebody close to me. That would be my happiness and comfort. I realized this when mama was sick. And at that time, I was so much younger and did everything on my own. And yet I felt so good. I knew that mama was pleased and this thought gave me more strength. Nobody knew about this. It is still very personal. True, I had terrible moments, but I knew I couldn't count on anyone. After all, I had a Brahmic. Also, oh, Sersha, I'm telling you, he was so special. You can't imagine. Together, we could lift ourselves up. And now, it is not surprising. It is so hard for me. Your Rishwa. The letters I write to Sersha could be my diary. Yesterday, I looked through the photographs again, but only of Abramic and Daddy. Daddy! He appeared in front of me as if he were alive. I heard a whisper, your daddy is dead. Your daddy is dead. No, it is impossible. He is alive. He is alive. Another whisper, already a third year runs its course. No, it is impossible. I can see his eyes, his wise and expressive eyes, and I suddenly remembered his handshake. I still feel it. 
It was when they led us into the hospital on Yom Kippur on Lagunica Street, and Daddy squeezed my hand while saying goodbye. Oh, how much that handshake meant to me. How much fatherly love it had. Oh, God, I will never forget it. My daddy, alive, my loving daddy, the dearest of all the dearest creatures in the world. Now I cannot dream about you. It would just be an illusion. Oh, tragedy. The tragedy of my existence. You lie hidden under each of my words, under each sigh, everywhere. You follow me everywhere, step by step. I mustn't have any illusions about my parents. They are no more. Oh, these words hurt and stab me so much, like hedgehog spikes. In front of my eyes, I see images of my parents' deaths. I wasn't with my father when he was dying. When they called me, he was gone. My God, I wanted to throw myself on him, go with him, forget about everything. That was my initial reaction, but later I couldn't. I had my mom, my brother and sisters. I had to live. I had to, for them. But at that moment, for the first time in my life, I showed my emotions. I cried, and while crying, I spilled out my awful pain without realizing. Until then, I had been keeping my feelings to myself. Nobody knew anything about me. I didn't know much about myself. Only then, then I noticed that my mom understood me. Mommy, I did feel it. At that moment, we got closer, and we were living not like mother and daughter, but like best friends. The age difference was unimportant. I was 12 then. Oh, God. And then mom was dead, and what she hadn't told me remained a secret forever. After her death, I got closer to my siblings. A Brahmic appointed me as mother. You are our mother, he used to say. I wanted to fill in, but it wasn't meant to be. I was left alone with Kipka. In my suffering, tragedy is play, playing a melody enough, enough tragedy. I cannot get rid of the suffering. Suffering, it is life. If you want to live, you must suffer. Or in other words, life is a prize for your suffering. I cannot do anything about the suffering, but I want to change this melody because I cannot take it anymore. I have been through too much. February 1st, 1944, Tuesday. It's February 1st. When I read these letters by Circea and Miriam, I recall the beginning of the war. Oh, how did I look back then? And I'm surprised that they could write such letters. It was not only a time of unease and fear, but it happened so suddenly I was scared too, but it's over. Today is the 12th anniversary of Grandpa Lipschitz's death. A few days ago, a Brahmic had his 12th birthday. A Brahmic. Today I was dreaming about him. I was still in bed. I had almost an hour. I imagined that they had brought a group of people uh, deported during the Spurza. I felt full of energy to do something. I ran there quickly and a Brahmic was among them. Oh, when I'm describing it, it seems to me so trivial, so nothing. I won't write about it. It's a dream anyway. Oh, if only this dream could come true. God help me but I'm writing in one style, it's no good. I'm full of longing. It's after one o'clock, but we, the school, haven't received any soup yet. Today we get new ID cards and everybody is excited. Fortunately, I had the soup for Sipka. There are no classes either. What a strange day. Until now, I have been reading what was assigned for the course at Bala's. I've been reading for so long, I have a headache. I hope I'll do well. I'm so sad. May I feel better. May I cry at night. And may I say forward, hey. Oh, it's so far away from me. How much more to go? Well, 
to what's quietly dormant at the bottom of my soul. I want to jump up and run to the one God. Oh God, help me lift myself up. I can't do it on my own. Don't let me flinch before hardship and put me back on my feet. My God, I have such longing. God, and I don't know what to do. I'm suffocating humbly before your majesty. I want to be pure, to diminish my flaws. God, I'm full of longing. Dearest God, I yearn for something better and the wounds in my heart still hurt. Something is sobbing and fleeing to you, the only one. My God, dearest God, I believe you will help me. Geto Litz Mishtat, 2 February 1944. Ha! The biggest in the human being is love and love. This is the true and the true. The true is the true and the true. This is the true and the true. This is the true. אני כל כך אוהבת את סורצ'ה. זו באמת קרן האור האחת והחמה בתוך אטמוספירת הקרח הקפואה. אני כל כך מודה על כך לאלוקים. כשאני חוזרת במחשבתי לאחור, אני חושבת שלא היה חסר הרבה שבכלל לא נכיר זו את זו. האם זו אינה התוצאה של השגחה עליונה? או, oh, כמה אדיר הוא האל, כמה רב עוצמה וטוב הוא, כמה טוב שאני מאמינה באלוקים. אני כל כך אוהבת את אלוקים. תמיד ובכל מקום אני יכולה לסמוך עליו, אבל גם אני צריכה לתת לכך יד, כי הרי שום דבר לא יתרחש מאליו, אבל אני יודעת שאלוקים יעזור לי. כמה טוב שאני יהודייה. וכמה טוב שלימדו אותי לאהוב את אלוקים. אני אסירת תודה על כל זה. תודה לך, אלוקים. גטו ליץ משתת, שלישי בפברואר, 1944. אתמול, בשיעור, בלה ביקשה מאיתנו לכתוב איך אנחנו מדמיינות את ההגעה שלנו לפלסטינה. או יותר נכון, ארץ ישראל. אני יכולה לתאר לעצמי למה היא ביקשה את זה מאיתנו. ובכן, מכיוון שיש ילדות שונות, היא רוצה לדעת על מה כל אחת חושבת, ואם חלקן עלולות להיות ציוניות. ה, ארץ ישראל, כמה מבטות מילים אלה, כמה כמיהה יש בי לארץ הזו. אבל מה, במקום שיעורים ביידיש, אני כותבת יומן בפולנית. דווקא הכמיהה הזו, המשיכה הזו, נחלשה מעט מאז השפרה. הכמיהה הזו נחלשה ככל שהתחזק שיתרח... הגעגוע לאבריימיק ותמרצ'ה. עליהם אני חושבת לפני הכל. אבל אגש למה שרציתי לכתוב. ובכן, בלה תהיה ככל הנראה המורה ליידיש בקורס השני, אבל אנחנו כבר לא נהיה פה. לכן גם פריבה ואני צריכות להשתדל להישאר בקורס השני. אנחנו הולכות היום לגברת זמל. אני אוהבת להיזכר. זו כזו ברכה עבורי, אבל ברכה במשמעות אחרת. אני מחפשת בזה הקלה. הקלה. רק ארבע אותיות. והן אומרות כל כך הרבה, כמה שאני משתוקקת לה. אבל שמתי לב שאני כותבת כמעט מדי יום אותו הדבר, וזה באמת חסר כל טעם. הייתי רוצה לכתוב משהו קונקרטי. ה, הייתי רוצה ורוצה, והרבה והרבה והרבה. הדס החלמיש בת משפחה של רבקה, בני ברק, ישראל. 11 לוטי 1944. פיסאץ', תלכו פיסאץ', ותדי זפומינם או ידזניו, או פשוטקים אינם, או פשוטקים שקרושיך. 
ale przecież to jednak jest wielką ulgą dla mnie. Niech Bóg obdarzy surcie zdrowiem i szczęściem, przynajmniej za to, że mi poddała taki cudny pomysł jak pisanie pamiętnika. Czasem, gdy zasiadam do pisania, zdaje mi się, że nic nie napiszę. A tu, gdy zaczynam pisać, mam przecież tyle, tyle, że doprawdy nie wiem, co wpierw. Ach, znowu jest piątek, jak ten czas szybko leci. I do czego? Czy my wiemy, co nas czeka w przyszłości? Pytam się z lękiem i zarazem z zaciekawieniem młodzieńczym. A nóż? I na to jest taka odpowiedź, wielka odpowiedź. Bóg i Tora. Ojciec Bóg i Matka Tora. Oto rodzice nasi. Wszechmocni, wszechwiedzący, wieczni. Jaka to potęga? Ja przecież jestem wobec tego maleńkim żyjątkiem, które trudno nawet przed mikroskop dojrzeć. Ale cóż, ach, śmieje się z całego świata. Ja, biedna Żydówka z getto. Ja, niewiedząca, co ze mną jutro będzie. Śmieje się z całego świata dlatego, bo mam podporę. Bo mam tę wielką, ogromną podporę. Wiarę, bo wierzę. I w ten sposób jestem silniejsza, jestem bogatsza i warciejsza od innych. Boże, jakże wdzięczna Ci jestem. Teraz był u nas w szkółce przegląd higienistki. Ale nie bój się, mój pamiętniku. Byłam i jestem czysta. Sunday, February 13th, 1944. Sunday. I'm sitting at the school now, and like all my friends, I'm waiting for the soup. It is terribly cold. There is snow outside, and the classroom hasn't been heated. I'm writing, or rather scribbling. My left hand is in a muff. I'm sleepy. I'm full of remorse. Maybe if Abramic had looked well, they wouldn't have taken him. He was such a good kid. How many times, when I was short of bread, would he give me his? Oh, how many times? That's why he looked bad. I'm full of remorse. I feel like crying, 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 even screaming. Today I spent some time with Zipka. I talked to her a little. I asked her to think and later tell me what she thought about people. Oh, I love her so much. Strange. I feel sleepy. It's such a sleepy longing. I don't feel comfortable sitting like this in writing. It's terribly cold. Oh, what does my discomfort matter now? I mustn't write it now. At night I have a place to lay my head. May I be content with that? How many people don't have even this? Do I know, can I know, whether Abramic and Tamara have the same? Oh, God, bring us back together. Oh, I'm full of longing and I'm writing this over and over again. To write, it's such a gift. Thank you, God, for letting me write. When is it going to be all right? I don't know. What an answer. Oh, I'm going to fall asleep on the school bench writing this. I better put it away and visit my friends from the other benches. Will it be better? I don't know it either, but really I shouldn't be fooling around. I'm full of yearning. God, my words are falling apart. February 14th, 1944. Mr. Semmel came and delivered a speech, or rather he repeated what the chairman had said before. Those who are to be deported, but are hiding and are being aided by other people. This is forbidden. Apparently, this is going to be some kind of easy labor, but who knows? What's more, during the work hours between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., no one will be allowed to walk in the streets. The ghetto is turning into an Arbeitz lager. The apartments will have to be locked. Only the bedridden with medical certificates will be able to stay inside. Nobody else. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to Saturdays. After all, an apartment can be locked with a padlock. What's going to happen with the tenants of the workshop? God, what's going to happen? Only you know. I was so upset that I wrote a poem. I don't know what will happen to the assemblies. The provisions and, other, um, and the other departments will be open from 5 p.m. So people will be able to get their foods. What I'm worried about most is Saturday. It's getting worse and worse. My God, isn't it enough? How much longer are we going to suffer? We are full of longing. Something is choking us like a bone. What's going to happen tomorrow? We don't know. Oh God, help us at last. This ghetto is a monstrous machine. God, how long will this poisoned life last? We are doing worse and worse. There is no hope, it's getting darker. Do we have to be alone to waste our lives in the closed ghetto? Our life is miserable. 
but it could have been fabulous, so fabulous. I'm burning. I can't put out the fire. I'm entangled by this eternal suffering. Oh God, everything is in your hands. Calm our bleeding hearts. Put an end to our torment. Oh, how to satisfy these hungry souls. At night, the Jewish police knock at the doors of the apartments. They are looking for those who are hiding. Last night, they were at Privas and asked about the men. Oh God, nothing like that has ever happened in the ghetto. We've been through many terrible periods. Each of them was different. This one is different too. Yesterday, when Zamel was talking about the people who help other people hide and don't want to denounce them, I realized that we, the Jews, suffered these deportations and their effects so much that now we're grasping at straws and didn't want to turn these people in. Unfortunately, we are helpless. We aren't up to it. Oh, suddenly I felt so bad. I was suffocating. I saw the spera in its full colors. Abramek. Oh God, I almost blacked out. The spera. How many tragic memories. How much pain and longing. How much anxiety are contained in this single word. Oh God, how much horror. Just a single memory. And what if there's a spera again? Is it a spera? Fortunately not. Thank God, like the other time. It's Sunday. We're at home. I try to finish my household chores as soon as possible so I could start writing. Really, I have so much to write. Probably there will be a spare today and we won't be able to go out into the streets. This morning we were woken up by a knocking at the door. Minya opened it. A policeman came in and asked about men. We wanted to tell him that he was the only one in our apartment, but it was no time for joking. He walked a little ways into the room, moved Minya's bed, and opened the closet, and realizing that nobody was there, he left. Thanks God. Maria's barge's father has been released. Perhaps this coming Saturday we will have an assembly. Oh, I like it so much. We haven't had a real assembly for a long time. Since yesterday, Franka Weisskoll had been coming to work, but I don't know anything more about it. I only know that every day we collect soup for her. But enough. We don't belong to Zhidovska anymore. We are a workshop now, and it's Mr. Schuster who is our boss, not Mr. Zemel. After all, it's better. I was sitting with my head down and reading. I don't want to waste a moment. I decided to read more, and I have a problem. I don't write anything special besides the diary. Sometimes a poem, but what about prose? Oh, I can't write prose at all. Have I become incompetent? Oh, I had nothing to write, but in the course of writing, Everything in the course of writing. I've written an essay for the class, and thanks to Sulza, I have something special. Maybe I've written it a bit clumsily, but truthfully. February 23rd, 1944. I'm more and more exhausted. It's not surprising, but it can't be like that. It mustn't be like that. It mustn't. I can't give up. But who's thinking of giving up? Never mind. It's so hard. What else shall I write? Perhaps hard yet again. Oh, I feel I'm sinking more and more into a swamp and mud and I can't get out. Maybe somebody is pushing me. That somebody is going to be stronger than me. No, I won't let it happen. I'll do my best. But again, I'm overwhelmed by exhaustion. Oh, how can I stop it? Who can help me? This ghetto is a terrible hell. Oh, the bell is ringing. I have to finish now, but I'd like to continue writing. It's so hard, so very hard. We are in darkness. Somebody is pushing us and pushing. We can't resist and we're sinking and we're getting stuck. God help us get out. Unfortunately, help isn't coming yet. Who knows if it's going to come in time. Oh, everything is in God's hands. What can we do? It's dark and empty around us. It's terribly dark and foggy. And this fog is getting into my heart. I can hardly breathe. Oh, impossible, we'll suffocate. Oh, more fresh air. Oh, we miss it so much. God, God, it's so tragic, hopeless, and bad. February 26, 1944. It's Saturday evening. I'm dead tired, but so what? 
I can't say I'm cheerful. I'm far from that, but for now the mood of yesterday is gone, thank God. Oh, last night I was in a terrible mood. I learnt from Circea that several girls from Benosh are at Chanietskiego Street. Some are still in hiding. Oh, it's so horrible. Circea says we have no idea how terrible it is. She's right. But if we had any idea, it would be worse for us. Last night a few girls, including me, gathered at Mrs. Millioner's. We were talking. We only asked God to take mercy on us and help us. Besides, they are collecting bread and provisions for those whose cards are blocked. Oh, it's so dark. When I think about it, I always recall the Ayelet Hashaha from Psalms. Last night was quiet. Nobody was taken, but one has to be cautious. Perhaps it's a trap. Who knows? Better safe than sorry. Sunday, the February 27th of 1944. I'm feeling awfully bad. I feel like crying. Oh, crying perhaps would calm me down. Oh, tears. I don't have them on demand. I don't even have them when I need them. God, what's going to happen to me? I'm suffocating. I can't find a place for myself. I don't know what's going to happen. First, I went to see Mania. She told us what happened to her. Oh, what an experience. I told her that she had to write a diary. It would be a pity if she didn't write it down. Astusha is annoyed that I'm writing now. Oh, if she only knew what writing means to me. God, I can hardly breathe. I can hardly do anything. Something very heavy falls on my heart, squeezes it. Oh, it hurts so much. Who is this creature called mother? Who, with great pleasure, suffers and gives birth to a new life? New. There's a part of her in this new life. Oh, isn't this mother powerful, extraordinary, mighty? No doubt, yes. Nobody can do what she can do. Nobody. Even pain and suffering make her happy. There's evidence of that. First, how much she suffers before and after she gives birth to a tiny creature, hoping that in the future that tiny creature will be her pride. Or when this tiny creature gets sick, she will fight the sickness day and night until she beats it, or until she drops. Oh, only a mother can do that. She can understand and sense everything. This outwardly delicate woman, but at the same time, an all-powerful mother. Will I be a mother one day? Will I be powerful? I don't know why I've written this just now. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I feel like a mother to my brother and sisters. Perhaps there's a difference between those things, a factual, tangible difference. I haven't created them, my siblings. They were created by the same person who created me. She gave us life. Why am I even writing this? Yesterday, during the class, Bala asked us to write how we imagined our arrival in Palestine, or rather in Eretz, Israel. I could only guess why she did it. There are different girls in the class, and she wants to know what they think and whether they are Zionists. Oh, Eretz, Israel, the words are so meaningful. How much longing I have for this land. Actually, this longing, this attraction has diminished since the Sparza. But the longing for Amabarak and Tamarshia has increased. I think about them first. Today we're going to Zemulana. I like to recall the past. I feel so happy. Oh, happy in a different sense. I search for some relief. Relief. Only six letters and they mean so much. I need it. I've noticed that every day I write almost the same stuff. It doesn't make any sense, really. I'd like to write something substantial. Oh, I like that. I like that so much. 8. März 1944 Morgen ist Purim. Purim. Aber was ist denn das für ein Feiertag? Ach, und was sind das für Zeiten? Wenn doch morgen ein Wunder geschehen wollte, wie damals. Aber sind wir seines würdig? Obwohl wir so viel leiden. Nun, was soll man groß herumreden? Ich wünschte einfach, es würde ein Wunder geschehen. Gestern habe ich Sucia und Kayushia gesehen. Nun ja, keine guten Nachrichten. Sie holen die Leute wieder nachts, sogar aus den Ressorts. Außerdem wurde Berekons Schwester heute freigelassen. 
Niemand hat mehr daran geglaubt. Es kommt eben so, wie es einem vom Schicksal bestimmt ist. 13. März 1944. Roku. Słoneczko, jak mi tęskno do ciebie. Lecz ty ukrywasz się, jest psia pogoda, wiatr, mokry śnieg, błoto. A wiadomo, że jeżeli jest błoto, to jest mokro w butach. Nie wiem, czy w moim życiu była jeszcze taka zima, w której miałam tak mokro w butach. Poza tym w getto jest nie w porządku. Znowu z biura kooperatyw zapisują na pracę na Marysinie. Z banku poszła już lista na bałucki rynek. Na tej liście jest także Minia. Minia, zauważyłam, jest ogromną cyniczką. Wciąż się śmieje i śmieje. Przypominam sobie, że raz w piątek wieczór z mi powiedziała słowa Szlomo Hamelech, że cierpienie fizyczne jest gorsze od cierpienia moralnego. Dlatego, bo cierpienie fizyczne wpływa także na moralne. Tak właśnie jest. Dziś tego doświadczam. Och, żeby już chociaż były zbiórki, chociaż coś, do czego można z całym zaufaniem się uciec. Ostatnio niczego nie ma. Niczego. Jesteśmy ciągle zajęci tylko analizowaniem swojego żołądka. Jesteśmy bardziej do zwierząt niż do ludzi podobni. 15 marca 1944 roku. Wielka szkoda, że wczoraj w nocy nie pisałam, bo teraz to już do prawdy mam bardzo dużo i nie chcę sobie przerywać i będę pisała wszystko po kolei. Więc wczoraj wieczorem umówiłyśmy się, że we trójkę pójdziemy po węgiel. Do odebrania miałyśmy 100 kg, a do soboty całe getto musi odebrać. Ja poszłam osobno, gdyż chciałam wstąpić do Hajusi. Dość, że o 9.40 stanęłam w kolejce. Ogromna kolejka, bardzo ogromna. Przypadkowo stanęłam wśród kilku kobiet bardzo rozgadanych. Mówiły, co nawet dotyczyło tego odbioru węgla, ale mówiły w przenośni. Napiszę to, co mnie najbardziej uderzyło. Jedna mówiła. Zdaje się, że o 7.00-7.30 jest mniejsza kolejka, bo ludzie są zajęci przy kolacji. Tak, podjęła żywo druga. I tak o 9.00-9.30 wychodzą, to znaczy puszczają się na łowy po wieczerzy. Ach, żyjemy jak ci ludzie pierwotni. Przychodzimy po całodziennej pracy, na prędce spożywamy wieczerze i puszczamy się na łowy. I puszczamy się na łowy. Coś zaszemrało w mym wnętrzu, coś zakłuło, zabolało. Tak, jesteśmy ludźmi pierwotnymi, dzikimi, po prostu zwierzętami. Myślimy tylko o jedzeniu i puszczamy się na łowy. O, jaki to wielki ból, my ludzie XX wieku. My, którzy jeszcze przed kilku laty staliśmy, można powiedzieć, na dość wysokim poziomie. My jesteśmy dorównani do ludzi pierwotnych. O Boże! I po to się żyło, po to się pracowało i tak dalej, żeby dziś po tylu latach dożyć takiego porównania. Och, to takie tragiczne. Litzmannstadt Ghetto, 21. März 1944. Heute im Bett musste ich still liegen. Ich durfte mich nicht bewegen. Die ganze Zeit über konnte ich nicht lesen. Also habe ich nachgedacht. Als mir durch den Kopf ging, dass es Mord ist oder schlimmer, dass man jemandem langsam das Leben nimmt, ein langsames Verrecken. Als mir all das durch den Kopf ging, bin ich auf den oder die so böse geworden, dass ich sie in Stücke reißen würde, wenn ich sie in die Hände bekäme. Welch tierische Instinkte. Gott, Gott, was ist nur geschehen? Und wie kann man in so einem Sumpf, so einem Morast leben, in dieser Luft, die voll ist von Krankheitserregern? Mehr als einmal habe ich mich gefragt, ob es sich überhaupt lohnt zu leben, aber zum Glück weiß ich ja, dass es sich trotz allem lohnt. Aber ein Leben, wie das von jenen Menschen, ist wirklich wertlos. At first, I thought that the weather was getting better. But we got wet snow again. Spring is not in a hurry, although we are longing for it. What will come out of this? Is it possible to hold on any longer? I can't. Really, I can't. I'm losing my strength, not necessarily my inner strength, but that's enough. I'm so weak that sometimes I don't feel any hunger. It's awful. Hunger used to have a bad effect on me. A skirt that was made for me at the beginning of the course, a few months ago, is hanging loose on me. I don't exaggerate. What will happen? 
Yesterday, I caught an nasty cold. When I got up first, I almost fell down. Despite everything, despite this hunger, I'm looking forward to Passover. I want this holiday to come as soon as possible. I have so much, so much to write. After all, this is the first time I'm writing this week. Yes, one more thing. Our workshop is moving to 25th Manaska Street and I have quite a walk. Almost everybody is happy about this move, but I'm not. What? Shall I finish now? But I feel I have so much to write. I still share once the pen. There are rumors that it's going to be better. Oh, I'd love to believe it. I'd love it to be all right. At least better. A little better. A little comfort. In order to screw up my courage, I tell myself, after all, I'm still young, very young. What else can happen? But time is passing by. It's the fifth year of the war. Sometimes I ask myself, what do I care? Why am I so interested in all of this? I don't do anything after all. But there is always a little voice whispering, but you do. And it always wins. The only thing that's encouraging me, as I've mentioned before, is the hope that I won't always be like this and that I'm still young. Maybe I'll grow up to be somebody and I'll be able, able to do something. Because I'm Jewish, I believe and I hope. I hope that this hope has some strong foundation. God, make the time go faster. God, how terrible it is. It's going to be the third seder without daddy and the second one without any man at all. Last year Aunt Saiska was here and today nobody. And today, today there is Stusia. Oh, it is so tragic. If only Abram were here. Oh God, precisely on Pesach and that seder, <clears throat> daddy will, miss, will be missed most. Oh, he will be missed so much. What's more, yesterday people didn't work in the workshop. It was a day off. We picked up the rest of the coal, or rather the briquettes. In the evening there was an assembly at Mrs. Millionaire's. There will be courses for the older and for the younger girls. Oh, what an excitement! One must admit that the weather has its effects. Thank you, God, for the spring. Thank you for this mood. I don't want to write much about it because I don't want to mess it up but I will write one very significant word, hope. Besides, we probably will have a plot of land. We had an assembly on Sunday. I'm so happy. Maybe it will be better. Maybe finally it will be all right. Oh, as soon as possible. Oh, this excitement. It seemed to be overcoming everyone. In a way, it's because of this wonderful change in the weather. Yes, no doubt about it. Only the Lord knows what we need and, oh God, give us what we need. Give it to us. At moments like these, I want to live so much. There is less sadness. But we're more aware of our miserable circumstances. Our souls are sad and really one needs a lot of strength in order not to give up. We look at this wonderful world, this beautiful spring, and at the same time, we see ourselves in the ghetto, deprived of everything. We don't have the smallest joy because, unfortunately, we're machines with well-developed animal instincts. It all affects us so much that we become duller and duller. Looking at us, one can see how much effort we need to create a better daily life in which... Well, why should I even write about it? I want it. I want it so much. When I realize that we're deprived of everything, that we're slaves, I try to put off this thought in order not to spoil this joyful little moment. But how hard it is. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for uh, watching this, uh, I hope, moving um, testament of, of Rivka and her words. These are uh, very rare moments of uh, when we can witness the words that were written in the ghetto inside of those, those very dramatic moments and that reached us after also year, all, all, all those years. Thank you, David, for uh, putting this program together. It's been an honor and pleasure to be part of it. Of course. Thank you so much, Kuba. Thank you so much to your team. 
our colleagues at the Jewish Museum in Milwaukee um, and everyone around the world to participate. It was so inspiring and powerful to see all the countries, all the locations and how um, you know, for this hour at least, Rivka's memory lives in our hearts. Um, you know, I often say there's so many of the folks that we remember do not have a final resting place, or at least not in a proper way, and at least for a moment or two, we can be that space um, and the memory can be turned into action. So again, thank you so much for contributing to this project in such a special way. I look forward to working together soon, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. You too.